Flynn, who attempted famously to arrest Tony Blair at the church. Last year in August, I was very fortunate enough, privileged enough, to visit Afghanistan. I travelled all over from uh, Kabul, I went to Jalalabad, I went to Fallujah. And um, one thing I just want to reiterate is that this nonsense that we hear in the newspapers on the press that the Americans are leaving Afghanistan in 2014 is utter rubbish. There are five very enormous air bases in Afghanistan with contracts for construction that go on to 2020 and in some cases 2024 and there are 65,000 Special Forces American troops who are also staying with those bases uh, for this strategic position that Afghanistan holds within the world next door to Russia, China, Iran, uh, Pakistan uh, and obviously so close to Syria and Israel. So any uh, thoughts that America are leaving uh, Afghanistan in 2014 is utter nonsense. Uh, back to what I wanted to say, which was that, you know, the First World War in, in, in this country, um, some 95 years ago, took the lives of 35 million people or so, and it was uh, some, many of those 35 million people, they didn't have a choice. They were sent across in the trenches to their deaths by their superiors. And they did it for king and for country. Just 20 years later, the Second World War came along. Just 20 years, you wouldn't have thought we had much appetite for war. And yet the uh, British people stood up and said, we are, have the choice this time. And this time we're going to go to war and we're going to defeat and take on Hitler and the Nazis. And they did so. And there was a loss of 60 million lives after the Second World War. Now. As a nation, what has my generation, our generation, those of us who are 40 plus, done for our children, done for our grandchildren? What have we done for our generation? What we've done, we have allowed a former prime minister of ours to be, we all know from the evidence that we have a former prime minister and in fact three other people I can name Jonathan Powell, his Chief of Staff, Alistair Campbell, his Head of Communications, and John Scarlett, who was once the Head of MI6. We have allowed these people in our country, after what our generation, our grandparents did for us, and our parents did for us, we have allowed them to walk scot-free as war criminals, guilty of genocide and crimes against Crimes against humanity in Iraq, where we, well, we know for a fact that over half a million people have lost their lives, as well as the children, the hundreds of children still being born deformed in Fallujah because of the depleted uranium used in the bombs to toughen the bombs so that they'll get through the concrete to be able to kill those people. Those people are still being born deformed. Now we allow this to happen. We allow these war criminals to walk freely in our own land. And 10 years ago, or 12 years ago, 2 million people amongst all, I'm sure most of the people in this room today, stood up and marched. But what have we actually done? What have we actually achieved to stop the war? You know, it's great for us all to come here today, a thousand of us or so, and all pat each other on the back and say, yes, we'll carry on, we'll keep demonstrating, we'll keep manoeuvring. But we're talking to ourselves. I've just come back just before Christmas from Egypt. In Egypt, every single Friday and quite often on Tuesdays, at least 100,000, if not 200,000 people get up and go down to Tahrir Square or they go to the palace and they march and they get results. They got rid of Hosni Mubarak and they're currently trying to get rid of their current dictator, uh, President Morsi, because again, once again, he's part of the same regime. The reason those people get up and they demonstrate week after week, every single week, is because they're poor and they have nothing. They have no food, they have a bit of bread to put on the table. To get the middle classes out in this country, you'd have to change the frequency of Radio 4 or reschedule the Archie. So what I suggest now, what can we do? 
about it. People are saying to me, what can we do about it? Well, I suggest in an Egyptian style that when the Chilcot inquiry, the Iraq inquiry that many people seem to have forgotten in this country, but is still somewhere under the bedclothes of the, of the politicians being brushed aside, and we fully know that it will be a whitewash again because it is not a criminal investigation that will look into the, 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 the crimes I mean, who is there left in, the, in this country that genuinely believes that Bush and Blair and Cheney and Rumsfeld and none of them, they didn't talk about the possibilities, the opportunities in Iraq for oil, construction, banking and arms? I mean, is there anyone really left? It says here, can you finish? Okay. <laughs> um, as I was saying, what I felt, what I want to do is when that Chilcot inquiry comes out, it is our very last chance to get, possibly get Blair. And I suggest that the 100, 200, 2 million, sorry, people who came out in 2003, come out again at that time, and not stand in Hyde Park making speeches, but stand outside Blair's residence in Chilcot, in Chilcot Square. Thank you.